If you want to know how to use Super Base Off with Next.js 14, you are in the right place. All right, so we already got our Next.js project set up. Check the link for the GitHub repo. So we're gonna go in here to Superbase. Let's get a new project started. All right, while we wait for that to load up, we're gonna add these packages right here. And I'm using PNPM. You use whatever you want. We're also gonna to wanna to grab this right here. We're gonna come back to our project. We're gonna create a .env.local file. We're gonna paste those in. However, instead of this next public right here, we're going to get rid of that because the way I set this up, no auth is going to take place on the client. You can use it in client components, but the auth part itself all takes place on the server, which makes it so you don't have to expose these keys, which is just a little bit safer. So we're going to come back to our super base project. We're going to go into project settings. We're going to go to API and right here we have our URL. We're going to paste that in there. Don't let anyone see this. And we have our Anon key. We're going to paste that in there. Boom. You also, if you plan on deleting a user or want to add that functionality, you're going to have to add this key as well right here, the service role key. We're not going to be covering that here. One thing you're also going to have to do is come into authentication URL configuration. And for this demo, this is going to all take place in the localhost 3000. But once you go live with your site, you're going to have to change this to whatever the URL of your site is. Also, if you plan on using OAuth, you should go to this website right here, and all you have to do is add this route right here. You just copy and paste it, boom. So now that we got our key set up, we're gonna come into our source file, and we're gonna make lib slash auth.ts. So we're gonna come over to these docs right here, we're gonna scroll down, and we can see creating a client in Next.js. They got all these different ways, client component, server component, middleware, there's all this stuff. The way I set this up, is we will only be using it in server components and server actions. I also do middleware, but we're not gonna be covering that today. So we're gonna be using server component, server action. So we come in here and we look at this. We see that server action has get, set, and remove. Server component only can use the get method. So in our code, we can set up two different functions. However, I'm gonna just set it up into one that accepts a parameter. So what we're gonna do is create a function called get super base off. And it's going to accept is component. And that's gonna be default to true. And inside of this right here, we can come back to these docs and just copy and paste this code right here. We're also gonna to wanna to copy and paste these imports. So I'm gonna rename this from Superbase to client. It just makes more sense to me. So if we come in here, we see server action has get, set, and remove. And server component only has the get. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna rename this to next cookies. And we're gonna say let cookies, which is of type cookie methods, is going to be equal to this get right here. So then we're gonna say if it's not a component, we're going to say cookies equals dot 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 cookies and then also this set and remove method. So now we can come down here and we can remove all this stuff. So what we're gonna return from this function is client.auth. There's things you can do with just the client. Everything I ever do is with client.auth. So this is gonna return client.auth. So now that we did that, we're gonna create one more function that we can export called get server action auth. And this is how we'll get the auth in our server actions. And it's just simply gonna return get super base auth where is component is set to false. So now that we got these two functions set up, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna create some actions. So we're gonna call this actions slash users. We're gonna add use server to the top of this. And then we're gonna create a function called login action that is async and accepts form data. And inside of this function, we're gonna add a try catch block. And for this error, we'll say let error message sure that that works i'll say if 
air instance of air then we're gonna say air message equals air dot message and we're just gonna return the air message and up here we're also gonna return air message but we're gonna set that to null so we're gonna add some code right here but you got to know that the way that superbase auth works with nextjs 14 you don't have to return anything from this function because it automatically uses cookies to basically create a global state for your user so you can access it anywhere on your website so from the form we're going to get the email and we're going to get the password and then we're going to use our function that we just made to get this auth object we're going to have to import that right there so now that we have this we can sign in and we're going to destructure data and error from this equals await auth dot sign in with password and we're just going to add email password and then just to be safe we're going to say if air throw air and one more layer of security we'll say if there's no data dot session we're going to throw new air no session so now we got our login action set up we're going to come over here to the login page and so i already got this set up check the github repo this code will all be there so we can come to our website we can see what this looks like it's just a simple login form we got the form with two inputs and this form has an action called handle click login button. And this function is automatically passed the form data from this form, which in this case will be the email and password. So how I always do this, I use the react hook use transition. And so it gives you two things is pending and start transition. So when you start the transition, the is pending automatically returns true. So right here in our code, we say, is if if it's pending this is going to say logging in otherwise it's just going to say log in so we come in here and we say await login action and we just pass in the form data and this is going to return this error message and we can say if error message log the error message otherwise we're going to say router dot push home so we'll go home if it works. So now we're going to go over to our super base project and we're just going to manually create a user. So we're going to add user, create new user. So we're going to create this user right here. All right. Now we come in here and this should work. So type in our email and our password. It doesn't fucking work. So I try to do it. Doesn't work. It says your project's URL and key required. What I forgot to do was come back to this auth right here. And instead of next public, you're going to want to remove that from both of these. Now, this should work. Logging in, boom, goes home, we're logged in. So now we can come over here to our home page. And let's say we, we want to conditionally render things if the user is logged in. Well, we're going to need to get the user somehow. So what we're going to do is go back to our auth file and we're going to create a function called get user. So we're going to go right here. We're going to export get user. This is going to be async and we're going to get our off object from get super base off and we're going to set is component to true. And then we're going to get the user from await off dot get user. And then from this, we're going to get data dot user. Now we have our user and we're going to return the user. So now we come back to our home screen and we're going to change this to an async function. Now we can say user equals await get user import that now we have our user so now we can do a little conditional rendering so you can see if we have the user it's going to say user is logged in if not it's going to have a link that says log in so now let's add some sign out functionality so what we're going to want to do is add a client component called sign out button so we're going to come over here we're going to create a new file We're gonna come back into here. We're gonna import it. So now we have our sign out button right here. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna make this a client component. So we're gonna make this a button. This sign out. We're gonna say on click. We're going to handle click sign out button. So we're gonna create the function called handle click sign out button. And this is gonna be an async function. And we're going to 
use transition you got to import that so now we're going to start the transition and inside of here we're going to have await sign out action so now we have to make sign out action so let's go back over to our user actions and let's create the function sign out action async so we can just copy this login action paste it in here we're just going to change a few things up so we're going to get rid of this we're going to get rid of this and we're going to do await off the sign out and this is going to return an error so we're going to get that error and then we're going to say if error throw the error now we come back over here and we import this and now this is going to work like a charm let's add a little css to this first and let's add also some conditional rendering and now this should work signing out boom we're back at our home page and we can see at the home page if there's not a user there's going to be a button that says log in so we can now click log in log in again boom we're logged in so one more thing we can do is so let's say we want to protect some of our server actions like you want to get some data but you have to be signed in to do it so we can do it right here with sign out action we'll say await protect action so now we just got to go write this function so we'll come back over here into auth come right here we'll say export const protect action equals async and what we're going to do is basically get this exact code right here and we're going to say if there's not a user we're going to throw new error saying not authorized and now we come over here we import this and we can add this to any action we want you just need to make sure that it's inside of a try catch block so basically how I use this throughout my entire app is I use this function get user wherever I need the user. I just make sure that it's in a server component. If you need it in a client component, I just make the parent a server component and then pass in the user as a prop. You could set it up so that you can get the user also in client components, but then that just complicates things. I think I'd rather just pass it in as a prop. And so if we come over here to our server actions, these can be used in both client components and server components. So you have a lot of flexibility with these. And that right there is how I set up Superbase Auth with Next.js 14. You got any questions? Drop them in the comments.